Okay, we're going to look at one more concept, that is the concept power. This is the rate of use of electrical energy. Symbol is P, and the unit is the watt, and the W, capital W, for that unit. Definition of power is the rate of supply or use of electrical energy, equal to the product of potential difference and current. So here is the equation, potential difference V times the current I equals the power P. Now the first uh, sentence, the rate of supply or use of electrical energy is shown in this equation, where W stands for the work done, which is the same as the transfer or use or supply of electrical energy per unit time, T for time, and that is of course a rate of use of energy. So you can use either one of these two equations to calculate power. The measurement, well, you need to really measure, first of all, the voltage or the potential difference V and the current I, then multiply them to find power using this equation. Or you could um, be given information or measure somehow the energy transferred or the work done and the time it took, and then use this equation to find the power. Um, the analogy for power, if you think about 100 meter sprinters, they use a lot of energy in a very short time, and so they must have powerful musculature. Compare them to an endurance runner, um, and you get the difference fairly obviously. Their musculature is not powerful at all. Just um, a quick summary of series circuits, what they look like and their main features. Obviously, um, here are three examples. Notice all the components are connected side by side in a row, forming one continuous loop. Uh, so the current flows through all components uh, since there is only one pathway. That means the current is the same everywhere in the circuits. Uh, when it comes to looking at potential difference, or the voltage, the uh, power supply voltage is divided between the three bulbs in the first circuit, uh, the power supply in the second circuit is divided between the two resistors in the second circuit and between the three resistors there in the third. Now, if all of these components have identical resistances or resistance values, then that division of potential difference in each case will be even. In other words, if this um, three-cell battery was, say, a 9-volt battery, each of these bulbs, if they were identical, would receive 3 volts each, and so on. Just to remind you about the parallel circuits, uh, here are two examples. Obviously the pattern is different from series, the components are connected below or above others in a column, and you can see extra loops and the junctions where the wires meet. Now this means that current flowing from the positive terminal of the battery will of course divide up when it comes to this junction, so some of the current will go through here and the rest of the current will go around through that bulb, joining back together again, and so on. Um, the potential difference is always the same across both bulbs, so that's something to remember for all parallel circuits. Alright, this is just a reminder about how to calculate the total resistance for parallel circuits. Um, basically, the rule is you add the inverse resistance values together uh, and then invert the answer. So, a way to express this, which I'll explain in more detail and, uh, during class time, well, we can summarize it with this formula here the parallel resistance RP. Uh, is equal to the individual resistances inverted, which is shown like this, 1 over R1, added together. So there could be as many as 3 or 4. We'll just assume there's two resistors in this case. So add those together, and then you invert the answer. So that is shown with a minus 1 outside the brackets. As I say, we'll do many examples in class and, and uh, you'll be able to ask me how to use this equation at that time. Now, 
Most um, useful circuits involve a combination of series and parallel uh, bits. And in this case, um, in this example, we've got a single bulb here which is in series to this parallel section here, um, which is connected back to the cell. So here's a cell. The current will flow along here through this bulb. All the current goes through that first bulb. But when it comes to this junction, that's when we have the division of current. Some goes through that bulb and some goes through this bulb. They, it meets back together again at that junction and so the whole current returns to the cell. So um, when you're trying to work out say the total resistance of this circuit it pays to find the resistance of this part first using the parallel rule and then simply add it to the resistance of that single bulb in series. We'll do a few examples like this um, during class time and we'll run through the solutions in detail. So here is a list of the electronic components that are commonly used uh, in, in circuits. We will look at only a few of these uh, in, this, um, in the limited time that we have on this cycle. Uh, it just depends how, how, how much time we do get to use in class as to how much we uh, end up looking at. At the very least though, you will need to um, learn the, the symbols for the diode, um, the, the components over here which aren't actually shown, the LED and the LDR and possibly the transistor. In fact, definitely the transistor. Some of these other ones like the logic gates and the relay the inductor aren't necessarily going to be covered um, this in this cycle. Now the light emitting diode, the LED, has a very similar looking um, symbol to the diode, except it also has these two arrows coming off it, which indicate light coming out from the diode. Um, the LDR symbol is very similar to a, a resistor which I will draw down here as a rectangle. Of course there are some um, some books that, as I mentioned, use this symbol here for the resistors. But using this symbol um, we'll uh, use this for the LDR. Now the only difference between the symbol for the LDR and the resistor is that the LDR also has this um, often a circle around it and definitely two arrows coming out. Um, in fact that's wrong, I should say. The arrows should be coming in. Oops, I'll just erase that. That would be memorable, hopefully, for you. Arrows coming in. Why? Because the resistance value of this component depends on how much light comes in. And we'll talk about this in more detail uh, during class. Finally, the transistor symbol um, is shown down here. It's the only circuit symbol with, well, apart from the logic gates, that has three legs. So the base leg coming in here, the collector leg coming down there to a, a flat line, a straight vertical line, I should say, and then an emitter leg coming out down the bottom. Uh, so as long as you learn those three symbols, um, and the diode, the basic diode symbol, that would be the main thing. If we do have time, we'll cover some of the other ones, or at least look at how they work. That really is a preview for um, future years, if you do more physics. Finally, we're going to look at potential dividers. Um, it's very similar to looking at two resistors in series. In fact, it is the same thing. It's just that we've turned it on its side. So now we have our our battery over here, our, our power supply, this symbol E just stands for EMF which uh, is another way of saying the energy supplied by the cell. Now that's going to be divided up by these two resistors as we've seen with series circuits and we're going to look at this particular uh, potential difference V1 which is across R1 uh, in the circuit. So what happens is that the supply voltage um, is always divided between R2 and R1, or R1 and R2, according to the ratio of the resistor values. So we're going to develop an equation and show you how that works. 
So here's the equation at the bottom of the page in this blue box and here's some examples to try with this equation. You can see that the ratio of the resistor values uh, is really this bracketed part here so that if we're looking at the voltage V1 there which is of course across resistor value R1 in the circuit there uh, R1 goes on top and we are dividing R1 by the sum of those two resistors R1 plus R2 so that's the ratio of the resistors uh, part of the equation that multiplied by the potential difference of the supply voltage symbol E in this case uh, will, will give us the value for V1 so have a go uh, with number 1, 2 and 3 uh, using this equation and you should get used to the idea of how this equation works. We'll look at it in class again at, at some stage as well.